The courage of the first in the battle is what guarantees the courage of those that follow. We have had modest numbers of U.S. military forces on the ground in Afghanistan for weeks. And there is a picture of them on horseback. We have had modest numbers of U.S. military forces on the ground in Afghanistan for weeks. And there's a picture of them on horseback. <laughs> that picture compelled artist Dow Bloomberg to create a statue for a monument at Ground Zero. I think there's a challenge to, a, to doing a military piece that shows more than just one or the other aspect of, of warfare which is why four horsemen of 9-11 round up. If we wanted to move, that was horses mobility. were the only way. You know, it looks glamorous. It's not, it's not glamorous. Here's the bridle. They'll share for the first time their personal stories and photos of that secret mission to inspire the artist at his Kentucky studio during his mission. This is so cool. These four commandos from the same operational detachment team. Lieutenant Colonel Max Bowers, their Green Beret Ground Force Commander, now retired, hand-selected these specific men by name for this crucial yeah. mission. And, you know, when you are tasked or required to do things like this where there's no precedent, you rely on the courage that you know manifests itself in situations like that, because you know you certainly never want to let down one of your uh, one of your buddies. Master Sergeant Bart Decker, Air Force Special Operations Combat Controller, now retired, called in their airstrikes. The special operator has a uh, has a lot of heart, obviously, to, to keep going through, through what he, he's put through when 9-11 happened. You know, you, you had to be ready. Sergeant First Class Joe Young, U.S. Army Special Operations Command, their Green Beret medic and sniper. No one man, no one horse did it. No one commander did it. It was a collective mission. And Master Sergeant Chris Spence, 5th Special Forces Group, communications sergeant now retired. He took all We're these photos. We've gone ahead and then I look back and here comes this troop of horses, the picture you saw coming over the cell. And I'm like, no one's going to believe this shit. Yeah. And I take my camera, I'm like, Shh, and that's where I got the photo of them coming <laughs> over the hill. At the foundry, Dow forges the photos and stories of these horse soldiers into bronze. I get the soldiers' experience. I, I, I understand what was happening in Afghanistan. I know what it's like to ride a horse in the wind. I know what it's like to have a horse jump away. For most, it was their first time on a horse, but their mission was crucial. Synchronized tribal warfare against the Taliban and Al-Qaeda by riding with and advising rival Northern Alliance warlords. This team and two others rode Afghan stallions trained to run towards gunfire and explosions. They even witnessed a cavalry charge. And it really looked like something you would envision in the Old Testament that, you know, Cecil B. DeMille would film and Charlton Heston comes walking out of one of those buildings. Surreal, but deadly serious. Their enemy was also the steep terrain. Some of the terrain we crossed uh, at night, you go, oh my God, I can't believe we went over that on a horse. And if someone would have fallen off, we would not have known. Their medic, Joe Young, continued the mission with a broken back after his horse slid and fell on him. Two shots of morphine and uh, to relieve the pain, uh, I would not allow myself to beat the wing plank. It, uh, that's not in my nature, and uh, it's not in any Green Beret's nature. American sentiment was, we need to go get those bastards. And that was the, bo the bottom line. And to be in the place and time to be the chosen few to go do that, it was an honor to be chosen. Colonel Bowers, who chose them, carried a piece of the World Trade Center on their mission as a reminder. I pulled that out and said, this is why we're here. We simply want to ensure that it's not a sanctuary for uh, terrorist forces that have attacked the United States. The teams attacked back with airstrikes. Air Force combat controllers like Bart Decker used laser designators to guide bombs onto targets, impressing General Abdul Rashid Dostum, the warlord they were advising. And uh, General Dostum pointed at it and said, uh, yeah, yeah, that's like a, uh, what we would say, uh, you know, as kids as a ray gun. 
it, it'll evaporate you. Bart also coordinated air attacks with a female navigator on an AC-130 gunship overhead, nicknamed the Angel of Death. Uh, General Dosum could hear that uh, through my handset on the radio. And then, yeah, he uh, made that uh, broadcast down to uh, down to the Taliban and Al-Qaeda. Hey, look, a uh, female up in this airplane is, uh, you know, wreaking havoc on you. And also this male-oriented society. Absolutely. How was that taken? Oh, that, that's an insult, obviously, to the, uh, to the Afghani men. They, they, uh, of course, the way the Taliban, you know, used to beat down the women. Another psychological operation involved their medic Joe, dressed as one of Dostum's fighters. Dostum's forces had captured a fairly significant mullah who was wounded. He'd been shot through the arm, and you can see Joe has an Afghan headband. I, I treated him just as I would treat anyone else. And we had a discussion with Do, uh, Dostum and said, look, we need to let him go. And when he goes back, what he will do is tell the Taliban that he was treated humanely. As a result of that, there were surrenders that took place. Uh, they knew that they were not gonna be butchered if they were captured. Hundreds surrendered in the violent battle for mazar sharif crammed onto trucks by Northern Alliance members who didn't properly search them. Well, we didn't know that some of those prisoners that came out, uh, there was an American amongst them. Johnny Walker Lind, the American Taliban. Months later, after the Taliban regime had fallen, the special operations teams went back to Mazari Sharif to bury that piece of the World Trade Center Colonel Bowers had carried on their entire mission. We took the, uh, the piece, put it in a body bag, uh, folded American colors over it as when we lay our heroes to rest in Arlington. Uh, we did that because it was so important to all of us that this piece of the World Trade Center was buried in a spot that was full of al-Qaeda terrorists and, uh, and uh, memorialized. Ten years later, these horse soldier stories are being memorialized in Dow Bloomberg's monument to all U.S. Special Operations Forces. The image, I think, typifies the Special Operations mission of get the job done however you have to do it, adapt, overcome. The artist's mission, just like the horse soldier's mission, accomplished with the statue's debut in the New York Veterans Day Parade. It's phenomenal to see how a picture can transform itself into a, uh, into a work of art. It's definitely historical. It makes it all worthwhile. All right, all right. Looking good, truth, looking good. At the statue's official dedication ceremony, Vice President Joe Biden agrees. You will not find in all of history a group of men with more courage, with more conviction, with a greater sense of patriotism, and more absolute outright damn skill than the men who are being honored by that statue. The courage of the first into battle is what guarantees the courage of those that follow. And you all were in the battle before America really knew we were at war in Afghanistan. I, I hope people see it, hey, you know, that's representation of, uh, of, of our forces and, and the commitment that our forces have to our country. I just hope the people that, that, that see that monument know, know the sacrifice of the, of the ones that didn't come back. Master Sergeant Chris Spence, who shot the photo that originally compelled this artist, agrees. These are the guys who have your back. These are the guys who are now watching an eternal vigil over Ground Zero. The falling of these towers launched us off on horseback. Now we're watching over you guys. We have your back. Alex Quaid, DeMosville, Kentucky.